All right, so today we're going to be talking about this SH Figuarts Ninja Batman. Now, he's a little bit of an older figure, not too bad, but a little bit. Uh, so finding him at retail might be a little bit of a challenge. Certainly you can find him on the aftermarket. And, you know, price-wise, that's really going to vary when you talk about aftermarket prices. I picked this one up on eBay for a really good price. Uh, I was told that it had been opened and that he was missing... Uh, a couple of his daggers, or one of his daggers, or something like that. I'm not sure, but uh, I'm not too concerned with that. I just kind of want to take a look at the figure overall. So let's go ahead and uh, take a look at what we've got here on the package. This is uh, one of the larger packages from SH Figure Arts. Got it like that. Got some nice pictures on the back. We've got our uh, UPC number back there. Uh, all in all, looks pretty good. So let's go ahead and crack him open and see what we got inside. All right, so here is our Ninja Batman out of the package. Real quick, let's look at the accessories that we've got here. Uh, I've got here in the package. Uh, so we've got some extra hands there, extra grip hands, fist hands. Uh, we've got some sword hands. We've got pointer fingers and then some more open hands. We also have a screaming Batman head. And then, of course, we've got his sword with the sheath over here. So, uh, quite a few accessories. I guess, I mean, pretty standard for SH Figure Arts, but still, nice. Nice to have an, a nice assortment. So let's go ahead and take a look at the figure itself. Now, the first thing that I notice is this plastic cape. Um, I'm not a fan of these plastic capes. Uh, they're, I don't know. I, I would rather just have the more flexible, kind of rubbery cape, as opposed to this stuff. You know, I, I just, I don't like it. Um, this is definitely something that would be better served with a cloth cape or something else. I mean, it's fine, I guess, for certain poses and things like that. But in general, I, I just I just don't like these hard plastic capes. I just don't think they look good. And, you know, unless you're just leaving it in this position right here, like, it looks stupid. Once you start opening these flaps up, it looks, I mean, I get, you know, it's Batman, so maybe they're supposed to be wings or something. I don't know, but uh, the cape's not great. So, you know, it is what it is at that point, I guess. Um, the other thing about having a hard plastic cape is obviously it's going to hinder articulation, which we'll look at here in just a minute. Uh, as far as the detail on this guy, let's uh, move his cape and everything out of the way. As far as the sculpt on the actual figure, I mean, I gotta say it looks good. I mean, it looks really good. Wonderful sculpt. Love all the little gold details on here. This is the material that the cape should have been made out of, by the way. Uh, the boots are very well done. Looks really, really nice there. Uh, looking at the back, and yeah, it doesn't stop, you know. Just uh, continues to look good all the way around. Articulation on the arms here looks really good. Or, excuse me, the uh, paint apps on the arms look really good. Um, texturing on the suit looks well done. I mean, this is really, really nice. Um, you know, so at this point, the only thing I really don't like about it is the cape. So, head sculpt looks really good. I think it's well done. Close the cape up, take a look at the back of the head there. Again, I think it looks really good. Looks well done. Um, I like it. I like the sculpt. Just don't like the cape. Sculpt, paint apps look really, really nice. Yeah. Okay, so as far as articulation goes, let's go ahead and see what we've got here. Uh, about this far on the legs, and, well, only about that far bending at the knees. We do have double-jointed knees and double-jointed elbows here, so he cannot kick his own ass. Uh, feet, you know, we've got the rotation, we've got the tilt, we've got the uh, toe articulation there, just as it should be. Uh, arms. Don't bend up nearly as far as you would want them to. That's about it. Wrists here. We've got the swivel with the ball hinge. So he can move his hand just a little bit. Head doesn't really do anything. This collar piece around here, this plastic piece that's attached to the cape, uh, kind of causes an issue there. Um, so yeah, it's a little bit... Yeah, not too good there. Not too good there, but the head does turn. So uh, as far as shoulders, if you get the the bat wings out of the way looks good we've got bicep swivels which honestly these bicep swivels are not the greatest looking bicep swivels um, 
I hate it when they do this and they cut the bicep right in the middle of the bicep instead of between the bicep and the shoulder. So that's not great. Not a good look there. Um, but depending on what positions or poses or whatever you have him in, I guess he'll look fine. Uh, so there you go. That's, uh, you know, paint app's good, solid, sculpt is awesome. Uh, articulation is okay, not the best for sure, but part of that is just due to the sculpt of the figure. I understand that. Cape sucks. Uh, let's just be honest here. The cape, it just sucks, and at some point I'll be looking to uh, swap this cape out with something else because uh, that's just not good whatsoever. So uh, now that we have him out, we've checked his articulation, looked at everything that he's got going on, uh, let's go ahead and compare him to some other figures and see how he stacks up. All right, so a couple other SH figure arts here. On the left, we got Spider-Man from Spider-Man Homecoming. And on the right, we've got, I believe this is Age of Ultron 4. Um, now, as far as the Spider-Man goes, I think he stacks up really well. Stacks up height-wise, build-wise, all that kind of stuff to both of these. Um, but the Thor one here is also one that has this, this stupid plastic cape that I hate. Now, the reason I haven't replaced this one is because you can see as it's cut... It doesn't go around the shoulders or the arms. It doesn't hinder any arm movement like this one does. So while I'm not a fan of the plastic capes, at least this one's done much better and uh, doesn't hinder any articulation or movement with the figure. This one definitely does. So now we got a couple of uh, standard six-inch scale Marvel Legends. These are a couple of kit bashes I've got. We've got uh, my kit bashed. Punisher on the left and my head swapped, uh, you know, Captain America, the 80th anniversary or excuse me, 20th anniversary Captain America on the right. Um, you know, they're both considerably taller than him and I think they should all be just about the same size. I mean, it works okay, but you know, he's got a smaller head, smaller build, shorter, all that kind of stuff. Not quite the same scale and sometimes not quite the same scale to me is actually worse than being way out of scale. I don't know. Your personal preference, but uh, to me, these don't work very well. All right, so here's a couple of other Batman figures for my collection. On the left, we got McFarlane DC Multiverse, Ben Affleck, Batman from Justice League, and on the right, also from McFarlane DC Multiverse, we got Flashpoint Batman. And of course, these are seven inch scale figures. They are considerably bigger than this true six inch scale Batman. Uh, I don't collect a lot of DC stuff that isn't. McFarlane DC Universe. This is one of the few here with this SH figure arts. And honestly, I only got it because I got a good deal on it. Uh, so, not a lot of good comparisons that I can show you guys for other Batman. But uh, I do think DC Multiverse from McFarlane is probably the one line that people collect the most nowadays when it comes to DC. So, hopefully, this is a decent comparison for you. So finally, we just need to talk about price here. Now, I'm going to go strictly off of what you can look forward to paying for this if this is something you want to pick up. Now, on the aftermarket, this usually runs somewhere between 60 and 70 bucks. Uh, I don't remember what retail was, but certainly it wasn't cheap either. So the question you have to ask yourself is, is this worth 60 to 70 bucks for you? Now, obviously, those prices vary depending on who you buy from and shipping and all that kind of stuff. But... It's not exactly a cheap figure. Now, full disclosure, I paid nowhere near that for this guy. Uh, I found somebody who was basically getting rid of a lot of figures out of their collection and was willing to sell these for a lot cheaper. I got this for less than half of what the going price is. So I did not pay that much for it. And I got to be honest with you, while the sculpt is great and the paintwork is great, just... Being that I'm not the biggest Batman fan and I hate this cape, personally, there's no way I would pay between 60 and 70 bucks for this. It, to me, it's just not worth it, period. Uh, again, the only reason I even bought it was because I got it ridiculously low. So, you have to make that call for yourself. Uh, if you really like Batman or Ninja Batman or maybe you're just a huge SH Figure Arts fan and you just really, really like their stuff, maybe it's worth it to you. It wasn't to me until somebody dropped the price very, very low. Look, I like the figure. I think for what I paid for it, it was definitely worth it. No no, no issues with that whatsoever. But if we're going by what you can expect to pay for this under normal circumstances, I just don't think this is worth it. 